parts for this project have been gathering dust in my office for over three years. I finally made some great progress this weekend though, so let's take a look. Before I show you the new setup, let's take a quick look at where I started. In January 2020, I had just gotten a 3D printer and I tried making a laser projector with stepper motors. So here's the first one I made. Uh, it was made with these step motor 28BYJ48 5 volt DC. Uh, these can be had for a couple bucks and they come with control boards generally and kind of like bulk. I got these, I think, in a five pack. And these are just directly driving mirrors and I've got some micro switches in here for limit switches. These don't, these were not super accurate, but they did, they did work. Um, so it's kind of, kind of cool, but these were just very slow and pretty jerky. So they weren't a great fit. The next thing I tried was this over engineered nightmare. Now this thing, um, I mean, it looks cool and like this, this spin is pretty good. It's actually under the, I designed little caps for these and they've got bearings in them. This is gear driven, obviously, instead of, instead of direct, direct driven by the motors. But, uh, yeah, this thing was just kind of a, kind of a nightmare, really over engineered, like I said. So the final thing I tried with the stepper motors was this guy. He's, you can see I've still got this attached to a circuit board with the steppers on it, whatever that is. Just these little steppers. These are nice, definitely way higher quality than these guys, but I think these cost like 15 or 20 bucks and these were two or three with the boards. So I've got these little, I think these are Pololu driver boards. And this circuit, I, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a mess, but basically this was just hooked up to the 3D printer and kind of CNC mill control system gerbil, uh, GRBL. And it, it worked, it worked well, like it, it wasn't bad, but to drive the mirrors anywhere near fast and accurately enough to get good persistence of vision, I was clearly going to need to move to galvanometers. After spending some time looking at how other people had built DIY laser shows, I found a pretty impressive example on Instructables, link in description. Uh, I bought a similar galvo kit off eBay. You may have seen galvanometers and old multimeters or audio equipment as VU meters. They convert electric current flow into a rotational output. They can also move a lot faster than steppers. However, they're a bit more complicated to drive, so thankfully the kit came with all the extra bits required. First of all, we've got this power supply. Now this is just wired directly to mains. Um, I've just got some electrical tape over that. I know that's not really up to code. I'll get that improved when I uh, put it in an enclosure, but when I grabbed it earlier, like this, while it was plugged in accidentally, uh, I didn't get shocked, so that's, that's good at least. And then this has uh, 15 volts uh, positive and negative, so 30 volt um, spread there. Uh, outputs and it goes to two driver boards, one for each axis, so X and Y or X and Y, depending on your preference. Uh, each one of these receives that, that 30 volts from the board and then it also receives, it wants the same um, negative 15, positive 15 differential signaling for its input and then depending on what it receives, it receives negative 15, it'll send it all the way to zero. If it receives positive 15, it'll send it all the way to one. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Two driver boards are identical. Um, I've just daisy chained this uh, 15 volt output so I can also use this for something that I will show you later, an amplifier. And then finally, the star of the show, the actual galvanometers. Um, so this is two galvos, uh, one for each axis, X and Y, I have them labeled here. And on the end of the shaft, there's just a tiny little mirror. So those spin super, super fast. This is rated at 20 kilopoints per second. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty cool. Like, I mean, it's, it's amazing in action. So I'll get this thing assembled and get an Arduino talking to them and we'll talk again in a moment. Okay, I've got everything assembled. Uh, there's the Galvos and they're now being driven by this microcontroller board. Uh, this is an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy, specifically it's a Cortex M0 processor on there. And then I've got this 12-bit uh, dual channel digital, digital to analog converter. So that's actually taking the signal from the Arduino and uh, converting it back to an analog signal for the Galvo drivers. Um, and that is, if I can get some focus here, that is a MCP 482022 or 4822DAC. So that's the entire system, and this works great. Uh, the only issue is, I mentioned that differential signaling earlier. Uh, this microcontroller outputs a uh, five volt logic. Normally it output 3.3, but it has a special pin for five volt that I'm using. Uh, and so I'm getting zero to five volts instead of the differential zero to negative 15 and zero to positive 15. So it, it works great, but I need to build an amplifier circuit for it next. Um, even a meter from the wall, it's really, you can't really make out what it's projecting. It's really, really tiny and you have to, you have to zoom in quite a bit to make it out. 
I've got the amplifier circuits hooked up now, one here for X and the other here for Y. Uh, you can see it's projecting over there, just a simple circle test pattern. And it's still pretty small right now, but that's because this is actually tunable. So there's four potentiometers hooked up, uh, two for each axis. This is the uh, position of the Y axis, and this is the scale of the Y axis, and then there's the same controls for the X. So I'll demonstrate those now. And just using a screwdriver, I'm gonna tune, turn the pot. Uh, I can move the, the Y up and down, so I'm not changing the size of it, I'm just changing, changing where it is. And then I can change the, uh, the scale of it as well. So I can squish it all the way down so it's just a line. There's no Y movement at all. And I can also really stretch it up uh, way beyond what the, the camera is showing right now. So you can configure that for both axes. I can configure that for the X as well. Uh, I can move it back and forth as well as change its size. So that's really nice when you move it to different spaces. Um, you're able to make it fit the exact kind of size you want to have it in. Now the next thing, oh, so uh, let, actually let's talk about that real quick. Uh, what was just happening there is these breadboards are very cheap and uh, if I kind of wiggle it back and forth, yeah, you'll see, um, they, they don't make a great connection. So that's what's going on. I need to move this over to perfboard. All right, so the next thing I want to demonstrate is uh, a little bit difficult to show on camera, but hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of it. I'm gonna show a few different animations. Now, 20,000 points per second sounds like a lot at first, but this is a this is a 12-bit DAC, so each axis has 4,096 points, which is like 16 and a half some odd million points total. So 20,000 is, is a tiny fraction of that. Um, you can see with this simple skull my wife drew, it's hard to tell on the camera. It looks like very stroby. You can see kind of an outline, but it doesn't look like that in real life at all. Um, but I can see that it is it is flashing a little bit. It still looks great though. Um, and the same with this little ghost figurine she drew. Uh, again, on camera it looks quite quite liney but in real life it just blinks a little bit. Um, where you can really see the issues here is if I go to something a bit more complex. So my wife also drew this fox and you can see it kind of strobes on the camera. It appears as though it strobes um, from side to side there over time. But in, in real life you can sort of see that, but more it just blinks in and out a lot. It's, it's not unpleasant to look at, but it's not great either. This is where it really kind of falls apart. And even with just a tiny bit of text, so this is only saying, laser wall, it's just a few characters. This is blinking a fair bit in real life. 20,000 points per second, It's again, it sounds like a lot, but it does, you, you hit the limits really fast. I've been converting these from, well, this is just text, but I've been converting the other ones like the skull from SVGs. Uh, this is just from SVG to G code using a tool called laser web, which will be linked in the description. And then from the G code to a hex format, uh, which using a tool from the original Instructables, which uh, I've made some improvements to to take the format that LaserWeb exports. And that'll be linked as well in the GitHub. I still need to design an enclosure for this system and tidy up quite a few other loose ends. Maybe I'll get to that in the next three years or so. I hope this video helps you in your own laser projection explorations. If you have any thoughts on this or other things you want to see me mess with, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.